as the Nisim and Galan Shalom. That was a famous story about Rabbi Melanes, where he used to give a shiur Friday night. Hundreds of people used to come to hear his shiur, and among them was a nice lady, Mrs. Horowitz. Her husband uh, was at home waiting. He didn't uh, like to go to shiurim, so he stayed home. By the time she came back, the candles already went out. Everybody knows when you come home and the candles are already out, that means they were burning for a long time. It means that she came home very late. So he goes and he's sitting in the dark and he hears his wife come into the house and he hears <clears> and he <throat> says, who's there? She says, I'm home. And he says, ah, Chotak Pozna, what is this uh, so late you came home? So he, he was angry. She said, what do you mean? I went to Mary Valenessa's shul and I heard his drasha. Right away, he got so mad. How dare you come so late Friday night? I'm hungry. I'm sitting in the dark. I'm waiting for you. I swear that you'll not enter my house until you go and spit in this rabbi's face. So then, what would you do, what would you do if a lady would hear this? She would probably scream, what are you talking about? You're the one who has to leave the house. But what? This woman, she was sadika. And she took it uh, without saying anything. And she said, you know what? I'm going to listen to him. And she's going to wait for her husband to calm down. And she left and she was roaming the streets. The whole night, waiting for her to find out what to do and how to go back home. So Rameer Balanes obviously understood what was happening through Ruach HaKodesh. And he said to his students, any lady who you hear that has an issue, uh, who knows how to heal an eye by spitting, should come and do it for me. He said that he had a, uh, some sort of a, a twitch in his eye. His eye wasn't able to open properly. He said, anybody who knows a woman can heal the eye, so then you should come do it for me. So then they go and the neighbors heard about this. And they sent this woman to go, go to Rebbe Rebbe and you'll be able to go home. So she came to the rabbi, and the rabbi said, No, so do you know how to heal an eye by spitting at it? She said, No. She says, Don't worry, you're going to help me. And my eye is stuck, is a twitch, spit in my eye, not once, not twice, seven times. And that way, you'll be able to be healed. She did it, and then he said, Now you can go home and tell your husband, You didn't spit in my eye once. Tell him you spit in my eye seven times. So then what? So then he goes, and the, the students were very upset. Rabbi, what is this? We couldn't stand this lady spitting in your face. How dare you allow this? So he said, listen, am I greater than the Torah? Am I greater than Hashem? Hashem he erases his name for the sake of Shalom between Ishra and Ishto. How Rabbi Meir Baraness is greater than HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So therefore you see that what? That even no matter how great they were, at the end of the day for peace, they put their name on the ground. Most people, when they get into arguments, they say, no, my way or the highway. Because they have gava. They say, Hashem himself puts his gava on the side. He has no gava. He puts his kavod on the floor for the sake of peace. And you are better than Hashem. You cannot go and give in for the sake of peace. Who are you? Right? And therefore, when Mary Balanes was able to do it, we all have to do it. Rabbi ben Buta, same thing. The Gemara says, Zechenedarim. A man went from the land of Israel to Bavid. And he moved there. And he got married there. So the new couple had a little bit of a communication problem. He used to say, cook me two lentils. But he used a slang that he learned and they used to speak in Israel. And Bavel, she didn't know what the slang meant. So she took him literal. She made him two lentils. He came home, he sees the plate, gourmet meal. Two lentils on the plate. He got so upset. So then he said, you know what? Cook me a quantity. Cook me a lot. So what happened? She goes and she makes pots and pots and pots of food. And he, he understood that he can't talk the slang to her. So, he, he, so then he said, you know what? I'll say something else. Bring me two butzini. Butzini, in his language, meant watermelons. And what did she think? Lamps. Butzini in uh, Babel meant lamps. She brought him two lamps. He said, this is what you brought for dinner, two lamps? Oh my goodness. Take these lamps, break them on Resh Baba. Go break them on Resh Baba. Resh Baba means on the head of the gate. We have a gate in front of the house. Go throw them over there by the garbage. Musa. But what did she understood? Resh Baba. Baba. Baba Ben Buta. He's a great sage. Everybody calls him Baba. Resh means head. Go and break these lamps on head of Baba. This woman is a simple woman. Yeah. She said, Hi, my husband knows what he's saying. He's from Eretz Israel. So she goes, she goes to the yeshiva, and you see this lady standing on the side after the shiur, and the, the students ask this lady, Excuse me, lady, can we help you? Why are you here in the shul? He says, I have to speak to Baba Bambuta, the rabbi. Okay, come, come. Rabbi, there's a lady here waiting for you. She wants to speak to you. Okay, how can I help you? She went and says, Rabbi. Uh, just hold on one second. Bah, bah, she breaks both lamps on his head. Glass everywhere. And he says, excuse me, uh, my daughter, uh, why did you do that? Why did you break those on my head? She says, listen, I did what my husband told me. My husband said, Rish Baba. So I came to Rish Baba. I broke it on your head. I did what my husband said. Shalom, buy it. You got to buy it. So then Rish Baba said, oh, Baba Buddha said, 
you are a righteous woman, for you devotedly fulfill your husband's will, may your be your will, you should have two sons like Baba Ben Buta. So I ended up giving you a big bracha. You see, he heard it was for Shalom Bayit, he didn't say one word. He right away calmed down, he gave in 100%. Why? For the sake of peace. It's okay that somebody will do something like this against me. If it's going to cause peace, I'm all in. I'm all for it. That's why a person has to know every situation. Who are you to go say even words? We don't let people speak against us, let alone break something on our head or spit in our face. Look at these great sadiqim. Look how far they went. A person has to know, are you better than them? Do you deserve them? You know, a lot of times people people said, you know, I'm, I, I, the people should follow me, what I'm saying. Who says you're right? Did you ask if, if everyone approves what you're saying? Who are you that you, you're such a great person? You have Ruach HaKodesh or something that we have to do what you say? Look at these people. They definitely had Ruach HaKodesh. Nonetheless, when it came to peace, they gave in, they gave in, and they gave in. Baruch Na'ulam, Amen.